Hi, it's Handy Val. Don't do any of these 129 things if you want your R129 looking and operating at its best. This is part two of the 129 don'ts in which I'll cover don'ts 21 to 40 in no particular order. So let's run through the next 20 don'ts of the R129 SL. Number 21, when washing your convertible top, don't wash it left to right. Mercedes recommends washing it in front to back motion. Not sure of the complete logic here, but the Mercedes engineers know best. So let's follow their advice. Number 22, when replacing your tires, don't go crazy with an impact gun. Make sure they are torqued to the right specification of your rim and tire and not over torqued. And if you over torque the bolt, you run the risk of snapping off the head of the bolt. Let your tire repair shop know this, especially if they don't deal with older cars. Number 23, don't drive around without your roll bar if you don't have those little things down there. The later model cars didn't come with them as they use a different sensor. But if your car did come with them, make sure they are on your car and not broken. There is a, certainly a way to test them. And there are two of them. Number 24, don't use any less octane than what's written in your operating manual. This usually means you need to use premium gas with at least 91 octane. If you can search for ethanol free blends, the less ethanol, the better. But I know that most countries in the world force gasoline stations to include a small percentage of ethanol in their gas. So this may not be something you can completely avoid. Number 25, once again with the soft top, after it's been washed or wet, ensure it is thoroughly dry before putting it back into the compartment. This way, it ensures you don't get any mold on it. Number 26, in your engine bay, don't keep any cracked rubber hoses. They cause air leaks and lead to performance issues, especially around acceleration. And luckily, these are easy swaps that anyone can do. Now, I'm just pointing to one. You need to remove a lot of your air engine filter to get to a bunch of them, and there are a bunch of them around there. Easy swaps if they're broken. Number 27, if your fuel tank won't open and you need to open it, don't use a screwdriver to pry it open. There's a lever just over there that is used to pull and that will open your fuel door if it's stuck closed. Number 28, don't leave these spots in the fuse box empty. Put a bunch of spares here because you never know when you might need them. You're looking at the rear fuse box and they're also here in the front fuse box as well. As you can sort of see, there's spots for four. I'm not necessarily heeding my own advice. Number 29, still with the fuse box, original fuses were aluminum and they can corrode around the edges. Here's one. And you can sort of see the corrosion that's with it. Now this is an older one, an original one, that I still keep as a spare. A corroded fuse can give intermittent problems. So if you notice a corroded fuse, replacing it is best. But you can also scuff the ends a bit with sandpaper. And when replacing, the ideal replacements should be copper. They're very difficult to find. So you sort of see these are the kind of the aluminum kind. They are copper, which would obviously be, you know, the gold color are preferred. Number 30, don't let rust take hold of your car. Hit the key areas like around the wheel wells with a rust prevention spray. I have an entire R129 video dedicated to rust and where it lurks on the R129. Watch it for a lot more specifics. Number 31, don't misplace your radio code for the original stereo. As of now, Mercedes dealerships have on file the radio code with your VIN. But who knows when they'll stop doing so. But sometimes the original stereo, although it looks original, it may not have come with your car from the factory as a previous owner might have already replaced it. So in this case, 
you'll be out of luck if you misplace that stereo code. Some eBay vendors can actually find those codes for you, but they do need a lot of information. I've never tried them. Number 32. If you put on aftermarket rims or an aftermarket stereo, don't sell your originals, store them. Keeping the originals helps resale values increase if and when you decide to sell. But why sell these beauties anyway? Number 33, don't overfill your oil as this can cause head gasket damage. In particular, for the M104, Mercedes has a special bulletin that says the original specification of 7.5 liters is incorrect and says to target 7 liters. On the dipstick, you target about one third of the optimal zone. So there's the max, there's the min, you kind of target about right there. Not all mechanics know about this, so let the mechanic know about it if you aren't doing your own oil changes. Number 34, don't drive your car without a hood pad. These hood pads, also known as insulation pads, have an important feature that keeps the hood cooler and helps the paint on the hood stay intact. So if you drive for a long time without the hood pad, you'll start to notice peeling of the clear coat because of the intense heat from the engine and you don't want that. The previous owner of this car put a new hood pad, as you could have seen, but he or she must have driven it for some time without the pad, as I have a few spots where clear coat is lost. Very few spots. All other paint around the car, except for the hood, is exceptionally perfect. Number 35, don't ever let the engine temperature get to the red. Even if, even if you see it touching the red, pull over immediately and let the car cool down. This usually means something is terribly wrong. Driving with the indicator in the red will certainly blow head gaskets and can cause other harm to the engine. A head gasket failure is costly for any car, but on an R129, even more so. Number 36, some of the newer R129 keys allow for your house keys to get clipped onto it. Don't attach many keys to it. I would actually say don't attach any keys to it as it puts pressure on the lock cylinder and may cause it to prematurely fail. So you can imagine the keys dangling here, putting pressure on there. It's not the end of the world if it does happen, but who wants to replace it? Number 37, don't use petroleum-based products to refresh your rubber seals. Ensure that you only use a silicone-based spray. WD-40 is an example of petroleum-based. It may help moisten the seals temporarily, but long-term, the petroleum in this product will damage the seals beyond repair. Use something like this, Super Lube Silicone Lubricating Grease. Safe to use on rubber gaskets, majority plastic compounds. Number 38, don't let bird droppings stay on the soft top for long. Remove them as soon as possible. Bird droppings are extremely acidic and they are known to eat away clear coat. So imagine what they will do to fabric soft tops. Number 39, probably an obvious one, but don't go through an automatic car wash with the soft top on. Don't even think about it. Number 40, don't neglect any of your fluids, like automatic transmission fluid, brake fluid, power steering fluid. On the screen, you'll see how to check those fluids. That brings us to the end of part two of this series. So far, 40 of the 129 don'ts have been covered. Thanks for watching, HandyVal. Bye for now.